is a processing stage and it's an active stage because it, it it's an active stage because it needs to read the rate uh, read the data from the source and then perform all the aggregator functions in itself and then write those aggregated uh, transformations to the output so it's reading and writing uh, simultaneously so that's why it's called an active stage and it can have only one input uh, input link and one output link it can't have any other links and so uh, what's what's the use of this stage is if you guys have an idea of SQL so it's basically like group by function we are performing group by uh, group by property or group by function by using this aggregator stage in data stage so to make it simple it basically classifies all the rows from a single input link into groups Be, uh, we define the grouping uh, columns so it based on this it gonna have like data uh, form into groups and then based on those group grouping columns it gonna compute totals or other aggregate functions for each group all those things like it doesn't matter which uh, aggregation we use because column for calculation we have it's not just sum or it's not max or uh, minimum value for a column we have like any of this we can use any of these uh, properties aggregating properties and calculate the statistics uh, I mean uh, the best essentiality of this aggregator stage is to group records with similar characteristics and then calculate statistics on all records in the group so you might be wondering uh, what are the statistics she's talking about right so let me just give an example let's say uh, okay so every company has sales team right so let's say they need to have their own statistics and see uh, how, I mean which month uh, they make more sales and which month is which which um, month is really dull and all that because that gonna help to improve their uh, sales uh, things right so yeah let's say uh, they have a task of grouping sales in each month and each quarter quarter is like uh, three months I mean four <laughs> four months I guess or three quarters yeah four months so four months or three months four months I guess I'm sorry guys <laughs> I'm really poor in math so yeah so quarterly uh, they're gonna have like uh, the thing is they're gonna have group by uh, group sales in each month and quarterly and see which month and which quarter of the year has the highest sales so yeah that's that's pretty useful right once they have like if they say like uh, probably September to uh, September to uh, December is pretty slow month they're not gonna waste their resources on that particular time in the in that particular time so yeah it's pretty useful to compute uh, compute the statistics by using this group group functions uh, in aggregator stage so uh, in addition, I mean, uh, in addition to revealing all these patterns, uh, all these like uh, group by patterns in your data, it can also reduce the volume of data by summarizing the records in each group. Obviously, right? Because uh, it, let's say you have like fifty departments, fifty different departments, and if you wanna, if you wanna have like, uh, if you want, if you just fifty, okay, fifty different departments, and each department has its own managers and everything, right? So when we when we just group group when we use group by function it means that all those let's say uh, a single department has like four different managers and sub managers right so i want to i want to see what each department or how many managers or what who are the managers for each department so if i choose like department so and so department group by this department and manager id so I could get only that department and see what are all the managers or who are all the managers in that department. So basically what I'm doing, I'm trying to filter out the data and grouping by the only my requirement, grouping by uh, as per my requirement. So it's obviously reducing the volume of data, right? So because it's reducing the volume of data, I can happily summarize the records in each group and making making it, I mean, it's it's easier to manage right rather than dealing with huge volumes of data so yeah that's pretty uh, cool function for the aggregator stage and uh, if you if you if you if you group by a large volume of data uh, let's say you have like many other uh, many other like one or more characteristics of data 
and you are trying to group a large volume of data. So what what uh, so what does it does do the resulting data set when whenever you have like large volumes of data you are grouping with one or more keys right but ultimately the resulting data set is much smaller than the original data because you are just grouping by right so yeah no matter how huge your volume is your incoming data the ultimate output data is generally much smaller than the original so obviously when there it is much smaller it is easier for us uh, for us to understand and if you want to uh, explain it to our managers or some other hr departments or anyone yeah we, it's it easier to rise because those guys are not technical guys right so we can just explain so this is what happening in this month and this is what we need to concentrate really because the sales are really huge so we're going to concentrate on this particular month and try to uh, pull up, I mean try to pull more customers so yeah that's pretty much uh, what we're gonna do with aggregator stage and uh, basically in a parallel environment the way we partition the data before grouping and summarizing it can affect the results what I mean to say is if you remember the partitioning techniques round robin right let's say you have partitioned uh, this uh, partition this using round robin technique what does round ro round robin technique uh, partition technique does it gonna send let's say we have five columns so at five columns and three nodes and the first 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 records first record go to the first node second record to the second node third record to the third node the fourth record again gonna uh, go to the first node right so that's how uh, what happens with the rob round robin technique but when we are using aggregation we don't want round robin because let's say uh, we have uh, departments so let's say we have like 10 okay let's say the previous example as um, uh, 10 and different managers like uh, one uh, different managers like 121 122 123 okay so if if i have like 10 121 10 122 10 123 so they if i use round robin technique this 10 and the corresponding manager ID 123 is going to the first node and 10, 120, uh, 10 and the corresponding 124 manager ID is going to the second node and 10, 124 uh, corresponding ID is going to the third node but it doesn't really make sense because I want to uh, I want to make group by function right if each node if, if the same department ID is going to different nodes how can I make group by uh, group by aggregation it doesn't really make sense at all right so yeah that's a reason you need to really uh, be careful about this partitioning techniques so if you remember from my previous video about the partitioning techniques yeah so it would be uh, apt to use like um, hash partitioning because whatever the key column or whatever the group by column you're defining just uh, give hash partitioning technique uh, give like hash key for that so that all those key columns all those similar key columns go to the one node so that we can perform all the aggregations on that particular thing so so yep that's that's pretty much uh, that's pretty much it so now uh, since we know a little background about the aggregator stage now let's get into the properties so grouping keys grouping keys is just like uh, it's repeating property uh, i mean grouping keys we have group so you see this blue blue things repeating so that means it's a repeatable property and the ones which you have like yellow means that it has a sub property too so yeah that's that's thing that's that's thing so basically what we are doing with grouping case is we are specifying the input columns which we are using to group by whenever you write sql statement you're gonna have like select department number and so on so on so on so group by department number right so group by department number you're writing your sql statement so here we are not writing group by department or uh, number or anything just we are giving group and columns whatever columns we have when we hit like, like the drop down box i'll design i'll design a sample job but just let, let me explain it so yeah when we uh when we hit this dip, uh, drop down box it's going to show all the columns present so yeah we can choose any of this uh any of the any of those columns based on our requirement what uh on what basis you want uh you want to group your data so yep that's it and uh, you can have it's not that you uh, it's not that you can have only one grouping you can have any number of grouping based upon your requirement it i mean basically you can select multiple columns as group keys 
and uh, um, and what else is uh, so, okay yeah so i said this yellow things uh, the bottom of the left uh, bottom of the uh, blue things you have little yellow things right so yeah that means it has a sub property so sub property is this case sensitive so what is this case sensitive is if you select this case sensitive it's true or false option so basically data stage is allowing us to specify whether the grouping key which you have given here in the group uh, in the group thing whether your grouping key is case sensitive or not so yep that's pretty much it i mean if it's true it means that i mean it's true by default so if it's true it means that it's a uh, it's 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 not uh, case sensitive or something and if it's false it means that yeah it, it is case sensitive so yeah you really need to worry about so that's pretty much it you need not really worry about this case sensitive thing and yep next coming to the aggregations category aggregations we do have aggregation uh, we do have three types of different aggregation types so yeah this is an interview question some guys when they really want to know they don't really ask uh, details about the data stage if you if you say that i have been working with data stage for a pretty long time so yeah and they just want to hit a few questions so that they could get a picture of uh, did you really worked on data stage so yeah they're going to ask these type of questions um, i have seen i have seen a person uh, asking uh, how many uh, how many aggregation types do we have in aggregator stage so i was like little uh, <laughs> i was like little blank for first time aggregation types and then i realized okay so this is what he he is asking calculation count rows and recalculation these are the three different aggregation types in aggregator stage so uh, calculation i mean it's basically asking uh, what do you want to calculate on which column you want to perform your calculation now and uh count rows a uh, count rows basically it's asking uh how many i mean it's it's nothing just counting the rows it's basically asking how to count the how to count the rows if you just uh, hit count rows and give like what what are the uh, to know the count of the rows right yeah it's it's just like uh yeah that's it uh, just count rows that's it no, no, i mean I, I, i'm i'm trying to explain the the words which are pretty clear in their uh, things so yeah count rows it's going to count the rows based on the grouping keys that's it and the recalculation recalculation is uh, we're going to use this recalculation only a few times if you want to perform uh, if you want to perform the calculations on already uh, grouped columns and already a uh, calculated columns yeah so that's when you give, uh, you use recalculation so yep that's it and the other thing is you can't you can't use calculation in this aggregator stage and you can't have like count rows again in the same stage if you want to count rows again yeah then go for another stage or just put an ag aggregator afterwards so that's it you could just to choose only one type of aggregation in in one aggregator stage so that's it um then column for calculation column for calculation is again a repeatable property and you see here this blue things are repeating so it's a repeatable property and the bottom of the blue things little yellow things it means that they have sub properties so yeah column for calculation is basically it's asking us to select on which column you need to aggregate and then once you select the column for a calculation it gonna uh, then ask okay okay once uh, so you have your column uh, you have your column on which you need to calculate i got it but what you need to cal calculate on that is it like maximum value or minimum value or uh, missing value and uh, non missing and percentage standard deviation and sum output sum uh, all these things like it's pretty much like all the math things so yep that's pretty much about it that's pretty much about it so let's see uh, count rows count rows count output column count output column it basically asking what uh like uh <laughs> basically asking what type of uh what do you want to name uh with the what do you name what do you want to name the output column or what what do you want to have uh which column do you want to count really or uh, your rows that's it so yeah that's that's pretty much it and uh yeah yeah recalculation it again asks us to uh 
have like summary column for recalculation so it's asking uh, basically choose your column for recalculation and on that column for re recalculation what is the exact recalculation you want to do among this so you're gonna uh, just choose among this available properties to add so yeah that's pretty much about this aggregation category and now let's go to options options it's alone null uh, alone null output right so alone null output means it's always set to false Mm, so it means it, it has only true or false options so if this is set to true what does this mean is uh, it's asking if, if, if this is set to true we are saying that we are saying to data stage that all the null values which you see in in my like input data they are valid output so whenever you're calculating whenever you are calculating something uh, uh, something on those columns and if you find if you if you see any null values then just uh, i mean it's, it's it's saying null is a valid output so yeah that's it and if it's false it's saying that if if, if uh, i mean by default it's always false so if it's false we are saying that null uh, uh, output a uh, null if the if uh, like <laughs> If, if if you see any null null values in the calculating or in the columns which I have given so just substitute that null values just consider those null values or z uh, as zero and then calculate your uh, aggregation or just summary or uh, just sum or mean or max values so that's it so by default it's always false so false means for every null uh, null um, column or I'm sorry every null record that's that that it gonna uh, it gonna meet that null value is being substituted by zero so that it doesn't really affect our uh, things so that's it I mean uh, for example you say like you you need to calculate your uh, average output so if you want if you want uh, put zero here uh, it, it affects right if, if if it's true it means that you're saying that is a valid output but how 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 does that gonna uh, affect our uh, things right it, it does affect our things because if it's null is a valid output how it gonna uh, calculate average based on uh, that null value so yeah you can you can just choose it but it's always by default false so it's a, it, uh, so basically when it's calculating it gonna count null whenever it see null it gonna count it as zero and then calculate average or mean or anything anything and the method method we have like basically basically we have hash and sort types so hash is like uh, okay let me just tell you what's this method method is uh basically it's your choice uh your choice on choosing like how many primarily i mean uh <laughs> it's basically your choice of mode which primarily depends on the number of groupings in the input data set and taking into account all the memory available and yeah all those things so you have two different types hash and sort Hash is when uh, you use hash mode when you have like relatively small number of groupings like let's say you have just like few number of groups uh, on each node so yeah you can just go for hash more hash uh, method so when using hash method you should uh, use hash partition obviously to input the data uh, based on your grouping keys and all that stuff so yeah it 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 ensures that all the records in the same group or in the same partition so that it doesn't mess up your aggregation uh, aggregation thing but hash partitioning is not really mandatory because you can choose any other partitioning method if uh, any other partitioning method if you choose uh, basically you want to you want to choose that partitioning method to creep uh, so that the uh, uh, so that the groups together are in a single partition right so that's important that's it and the sort thing is if as i said the hash partitioning hash partitioning is relatively effective for small for small groups uh, we need to have another option for large groups to write so yeah that's when the sort uh, sort method comes into action so if the grouping number if the number of groups is large and you and you need to have like multiple grouping keys uh, sorting on the multiple grouping keys grouping keys so yeah that's when you use uh, this sort method uh, so yeah prob I mean normally we use sort method and this sorting requires pre-grouping operation pre-grouping operation means after sorting 
all records in a group a given group in the same partition are consecutive so yeah it, it requires just a pre-grouping operation and you really need not worry about these things yeah just just uh, checking for uh, just just uh, giving giving you a brief idea and yep that's pretty much it about those uh, hash and sort uh, hash and sort methods and now let's go to advanced and yep you need not really worry about this and uh, we just pretty much discussed about this yeah so this is where you're gonna use your partitioning techniques and if you choose your partition techniques it's gonna have all the available properties and then perform and all the key functions and all that so yep that's pretty much about it oh yeah uh, I forgot about this thing uh, default to decimal output so yeah default to decimal output is uh, by default what happens is yeah this is also one of the important important interview questions they're gonna ask if you if you just have like uh, aggregated columns so what are those uh, what is the data type of those aggregated columns in the output so by default all the calculation or recalculation columns have an output type of double so double is the data type so yeah they uh, so they by default they have this but if you choose this property default to decimal output so this property allows you allows you to specify basically that the column uh, that the output column which you are generating i need to have an output type of decimal and you can also specify the precision and all the de decimal right so you need to specify the precision and all that so yep that's that's uh, that's only one thing which i have uh, which i have forgot probably and the other thing is so the other thing is if if it's if the aggregator stage is set to execute by default it's in parallel so yeah if it's executed in parallel mode you can select a partitioning method on input thing input uh, you can have like you can select the partitioning type so this will basically if you select the partitioning type basically whatever the source stage what type of partitioning technique it just gonna doesn't care it just uh, overrides the partitioning technique from the previous stage but if if this is uh, executed in the sequential mode so what happens is uh, but okay so if this is executed in sequential mode but the preceding stage like the source stage we do have this right so if this doesn't execute in sequential but just say if no yeah so if this aggregator is executed in sequential mode but this data set obviously is executed in parallel mode so what happens is this thing it's C collector type this change to collector type and we don't have much options we have only four op four options right and um, if you remember these four options we talked about them uh, what what does this collector types indicate right so yeah that's it if you have a parallel if you have uh, execution mode by default it's parallel choose then on the input tab you're just uh, you're basically uh, partitioning and if it's sequential mode and the previous stage is parallel then it's gonna have uh, the collecting type so yep that's pretty much uh, that's I guess uh, now I have been come now I have completed pretty much everything now let's design a uh, simple job and so uh, and show you how uh, this aggregator actually works okay so before that let me show you how we uh, how we just like group by functions in SQL okay so select star from emp emp is my table so let's see uh, what are the columns present in that so we have emp number name job ha manager high date salary commission and department number so okay i want to have i want to i want to group by department number and see uh, salary uh, salary in those uh, group by department numbers so how do you write so how do you write it's select department number right yeah department number and i want to calculate some salary for each department and i also want to calculate i want i also want to know what's a maximum salary given and what's a minimum salary given from emp right group by group by what which column we need to group by department number obviously right so yeah just department number and then semicolon okay so it's okay so it's not salary it's just sal okay i need to write it again 
select the EPT number sum cell max cell min cell from EMP group by department number okay so see so it's having it it, it has only three departments and it's showing the sum salary the maximum salary and minimum salary so yep that's pretty much uh, so we need to write the SQL statement but in aggregator stage let's uh, do it in aggregator stage now so let me just put a uh, Oracle connector as a source because uh, yeah we do have some few tables in Oracle connector and then aggregator and then just write it to some data set okay yeah and then just write it to some data set okay now let's create because we are using oracle let's create the parameter set so yeah go to the parameters and create it so what what are what are the things you need to have do you remember server username and password right see server username and password let's create parameters for these three okay oh, i'm sorry let's go to this parameters and create parameters now so server So server and then just server name right server name and type is string right and my server name is Oracle it depends it depends on the project uh, but yeah I'm explaining it on my personal system so yeah and the username is just username again uh, it's again string if you have if, if a, a real-time project you will have the path here that path uh, that path we're gonna have in the default value but since it's on personal system uh, I'm just gonna just gonna say uh, Oracle and username is I have Scott and password and this is again password or something else you can just have your password remember it's all it's, it should be encrypted it doesn't make sense if you use string so my password just confirm it and then hit ok ok now select all these parameters and create parameter set so what parameter set oracle uh, oracle details ok oracle details and don't worry really about anything and then yep and what do you want or what do you want to uh, have your file name just say uh, we aggregator right so let's okay not aggregator we're gonna use the same parameter for all other jobs too so let's say uh, schema okay just schema one so remember schema one everything falls into place then click on okay and then uh, just save your parameters something uh, somewhere and then it's asking if you want to replace all these things with the just the parameter set yep and then yep see everything is set so now let's go and choose the parameters so server go to the parameter see server and then username parameter username and the password parameter password so that's pretty much it so what did I say first test your connection and see see everything falls into place so now does the connection because it's really waste of time right so the connection of uh, connection was successful so now go to your uh, this thing so just select yes and what table uh, what did we choose EMP right so yeah let's work on the same column same table sorry now load your uh, EMP things so what's your uh, EMP yep here is your EMP so click on OK and then just click OK and now let's see how the data looks like so every time it asks us because uh, it, if it's saying parameter set uh, it, it's just verifying if, if this is the parameter set you want to use or is there some other thing 
so yep we do have uh, this thing so now just hit on ok and now come to the aggregator stage so aggregator stage so what do you want to group by what did we group by in SQL it's department number right so just hit on department number and aggregation type it's all obviously calculation we need to calculate uh, output and all that so yeah what's a calculation you need to do on which column calculation you need to do salary right so salary but what calculation you need to do you need to have maximum value and what else what else you just say mean let's choose uh, something else and let's say you have some output and what else where are mean and max let me just see okay we have maximum and let's say min two okay so these are all the things uh, which uh, which we are doing it so maximum value of output column so it's asking what do you want to name the name your uh, field so i just want to name it max sal okay it's saying it, it can't accept those special characters so just max cell okay and now uh, what is this mean cell mean cell and this is min cell and this is some um, sum right sum of the cell department wise so yep that's pretty much it and yeah it's only few uh, few so everything is like method hash and everything let's just put it that way and now we're gonna hash partitioning so that department number all the department number goes into a single place and you can perform sort too you can perform sort but yeah it's if, since we have only few columns i'm not performing any sort and now output columns see these are the output columns uh, output columns are those columns which we specify as the group number and all these things all these things so just map your output columns just hit on and here dr just drag all those output columns and hit ok and now choose the file I'm not choosing the parameter here I'm sorry I didn't create a parameter but just browsing for the file so yeah if you choose ex.txt or fs those are not the extension for the data set right the job just about so choose make sure when you are choosing the file extension it's .ds file so hit on .ds file and yep I want to overwrite it and that's pretty much it so now just click on ok and let's see uh, I mean let's compile it first let's compile it and see uh, if we have everything in place see everything is good now just close it and run it it's asking if you want to use this parameter set yep I want to use this parameter so yep it's successful see we have 14 rows and the output has only 3 rows because we are grouping by right it's pretty much easy to analyze it's, it, it's hard to analyze 14 rows and it's easier to analyze three rows so this is what I was speaking about it makes our job easy so yeah see so we have max salary in the 30 we do have like 14 things but the max salary is 2850 and the mean and the minimum salary is really 950 and maximum uh, some of the salary so yeah this is so we can say that uh, obviously when we have this thing uh, so we can analyze now that the department who are, uh, are in the 20 department uh, 20 department they are having the high I mean they are I guess there are more people in the 20 department because the sum is uh, really high so probably that or their salaries might be high uh, so yep because yeah this that salaries might be high you can just have like your own computer uh, your own statistics but it, it, it doesn't really make sense uh, to me because it's just department number right but yeah whenever you have like sales numbers and yeah let's see like if if uh, the merchant is just uh, paying uh, paying and all that stuff and they, they want to see uh, which merchant is like paying in time and which merchant is like, really good uh, in their transactions and all that yeah that makes really a lot of sense to me so yeah that's pretty much how you use uh, this uh, aggregator stage so if you see this is the same thing right some salary in 30 department number we have 9400 so it's same exact output 
but we did it in a data stage so that's it that's pretty much about the data stage so yeah now uh, you do you remember i said whatever the data state data stage creates as the output columns it has double by default right it's this is department number is grouping so it doesn't uh, change its uh, data type but all the other things like this for uh, this four max min mean and sum they have by default double right yeah if you don't want double and if you want some decimal output yeah so you can then uh, choose this thing decimal uh, this decimal thing decimal value or decimal output and anything yeah whatever that is case sensitive and now uh, so yeah just uh, just choose it uh, yeah group by and then choose uh, decimal or uh, decimal value yeah default to decimal output so if you choose this instead of uh, giving it double it gonna give uh, output as a decimal data type so yep that's pretty much about this uh, data set data set stage i mean sorry not data stage aggregator stage so yeah this is how you do your aggregations uh, in data stage this is pretty cool stage because it, it enables us to perform all the aggregations and just group by and have our own uh, uh, just conclusions drawn from this stage right so yep that's pretty much it guys and in my next video uh, copy stage I, I'll go with the copy stage it's pretty short video where we don't have many functionalities in copy it just uh, okay I'm not gonna tell it now so yeah I'll just probably uh, make it pretty soon and once we are done with the copy then I gonna have a filters filter yeah I'll try to do this uh, copy and filter because these are the pretty much uh, simple stages and then uh, move on to the other stages okay thank you guys thank you so much for watching and thanks bye bye